Okay, so now we're going to go into solving equations, but we're going to limit this recording to solving strictly the exponential equations. We have two types, exponential and logarithmic. We are going to limit this recording to only the exponential equations, and there's more than one way to solve an exponential equation, but we're going to hold to the exponentials. Okay, so here's an exponential equation, 5 to the power of 3x minus 1 equaling 125. If it's possible to rewrite your exponential equation such that the bases are the same, like both of these being bases of 5, that's your best option. So on number 1, I'm going to leave the left side alone, and I'm going to rewrite 125 as 5 cubed. Now we've already discussed that if the bases are the same, you can set the exponents equal. So here's where I can take the 3x minus 1, set it equal to 3, and this solving becomes very easy. I add 1 to each side, 3x equals 4, and then when I divide both sides by 3, I have my solution. Okay, now we've played around with this method a little bit already, so this shouldn't be terribly new to you. Okay, number 2, 1 fourth equaling 8 to the x. 8 to the x, oh my, okay, I can't get 1 fourth to be 8 to the x, that's not happening. But 8 is 2 cubed, and 4 is 2 squared, so I'm going to shift all of these to be 2 to a power. Okay, so this is 1 over 2 squared, and this is 2 cubed to the power of x. So I can work with a base of 2. Okay, so the left side becomes 2 to the negative 2, and the right side is 2 to the power of 3x. Now we're sitting in a very good position. The bases are the same. I simply set the exponents equal. Now when I divide by 3, a negative 2 thirds equals x, and that is my solution. So remember that in this section we're solving, and when you're solving, you're looking for a value for x. So all of your answers should say x equals something, okay? All of your answers should say x equals something in this section. Okay, number three, again I have an eight and a four. So I'm gonna break it down until I get a base of two. Eight is two cubed to the power of x plus three. Four is two squared to the power of five minus two x. So I see my bases of two. Well, I can work just a little more with this. This is 2 to the power of 3x plus 9, and this is 2 to the power of 10 minus 4x. Once you've manipulated it to get the bases the same, then you just set the exponents equal. So this is really quite easy. Okay, this is really quite easy. This is a linear equation now. So if I add 4x to each side, And then if I subtract 9 from each side, I'll get 7x equaling 1, or my solution being 1 7. Again, remember, all of these questions in this section are solve the equation. Your answer should be x equals something. It could be x equaling a number. It could be x equaling a whole bunch of nasty looking logarithms, but it's going to be x equaling something. Okay, number four. I have a two and an eight. My two is good. My eight needs to be rewritten as what? Two cubed. Two to the power of three. Two, th two to the third. So this becomes two to the x plus four and two to the three x minus eighteen. So now I just set the exponents equal and have a nice, simple, linear equation sitting here. If I subtract 3x, moving the x to the left side, and then if I subtract 4, and then last divide by a negative 2, I have a solution, which is x equals 11. These are your easiest solving examples when you can take the equation and manipulate it a little bit to get the bases same, both of the bases being a nice number like 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or something, and then you can set your exponents equal and it should solve nicely for you.
Okay, the next set is not quite like this. For example, look at number one. This is a lovely two, but you know, seven is not two to a power. And I cannot make seven be two to a power. So that method is not going to work. We can't use that method in, on this kind of example. So I've got to come up with another way of solving this thing. And it says in the direction, solve this exponential equation by using a logarithm. Okay, so here, I can't get the bases the same, so I'm going to use a logarithm. All right, and I prefer to use a natural logarithm because it's a little easier to write. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the natural log of each side of this equation. So I can do anything to my equation so long as I do the exact same thing to both sides of it, thus maintaining equality. So I'm going to take the natural log of each side, and you could just do a log if you want to, but I'm going to use a natural log. Then I can pull the x to the front of the logarithm by using my properties. So I get x natural log of 2 equaling the natural log of 7. Now remember, the answer is supposed to be x equaling something. The goal is x equals something. So at this point, to get x equaling something, I've got to lose that natural logarithm. I'm going to divide off the natural log of 2. So that now it says x equals something, which will be my answer. Natural log of 7 over the natural log of 2. So the answer is x equals something. Sometimes it's a nice number, and sometimes it's a bunch of logarithms in there. But that is your answer. And you would not change it to a decimal. You just leave it like that. Okay, so example two. The left is 3 to a power, but there is no way I'm going to take 0 0.07 and make it 3 to a power. So my only option is to apply a logarithm. So I'm going to use the natural logarithm. I'm going to let this be the natural log of 3 to the power of point, negative 0 0.02x and the natural log of 0 0.07. So I'm going to take the natural log of each side of this equation. Now I'm going to use those properties to pull that exponent, which has my x in it, to the front of the logarithm. So this becomes a negative 0.02x natural log of 3 equaling the natural log of 0 0.07. Stay focused on your goal. Your goal is to make x equal something. There's a bunch of stuff attacking x here, right? All kinds of mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide all that stuff off. I'm going to lose the negative 0 0.02 and the natural log of 3, so x is what I have left. So I'm going to divide both sides of this question, of this equation, by a negative 0 0.02 natural log of 3. So now I know what x equals. It equals the natural log of 0 0.07, oh, and I'm going to put the negative in the front, over 0 0.02 natural log of 3. So this first page shows you both methods, how to work an exponential equation by getting the bases the same, and how to solve an exponential equation by applying a logarithm. And we're going to continue with examples of solving, applying logarithms, if I can get to the top of the page. There we go. So here's continuation of solving by applying the logarithm. Now you only apply the logarithm when you get the term with your x variable in it alone. In other words, you have to isolate that term that has my x in it. You have to get it by itself before you apply the natural logarithm. Okay, so I've got to isolate that term. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to subtract the 4 from each side of this equation. So now I have my 3e to the 2x equaling 114. So my term is alone. My term that has the x variable in it is alone. Once it's alone, then I can take the natural log of it. Okay, now I have to apply my properties. 
This 3 is not to the power of 2x. 3 is not to the power of 2x. So I need to rewrite this as the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of e to the 2x equaling the natural log of 114. Focus on where in the world is x. This is the term where x exists, right? So let me move the natural log of 3 to the other side by subtracting it. So I'm going to subtract the natural log of 3, subtract the natural log of 3 from each side of this equation. When I do that, I'm going to have the natural log of e to the 2x equaling the natural log of 114 minus the natural log of 3. Now you cannot actually subtract, that is not the natural log of 111. Okay, it's not. It's going to turn into a fraction actually, right? Mm -hmm. Don't make it. You can't do that. What is the natural log of e to the 2x? Two x. Just 2x. So 2x equals the natural log of 114 minus the natural log of 3. So now I know what x is. I divide both sides by 2. It's the natural log of 114 minus the natural log of 3 all over 2. There's your solution. Your solution is going to be kind of ugly. Okay, They're not very pretty answers. But there is your x value. Let's try this number four. Okay, what a mess. I got a base of two, a base of three. There is no way I'm going to get those bases to be different than that. So I'm going to take the natural log of each side. Remember, I can do anything I want to to an equation so long as I do the same thing to both sides of it. Okay, so I'm going to pull the 3x minus 2 to the front because I've got to get the exponent out, the x variable out of the exponent. So this becomes 3x minus 2 times the natural log of 2 and 2x plus 1 times the natural log of 3. My goodness, my x is all over the place. Okay, this is, x is everywhere. I've got to get x out of the parentheses now. Okay, so I'm going to distribute the natural log of 2 into the binomial 3x minus 2. So this is going to be 3x natural log of 2 minus 2 natural log of 2. And then I'm going to distribute the natural log of 3 on the right side. And this will be 2x natural log of 3 plus 1 natural log of 3. So I have the x variable out of the parentheses finally. So now which one of these terms has x in it? This one does and this one does. I need to get them on the same side of this equation and everybody else away. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to subtract, so I can move it to the left, I'm going to subtract the 2x natural log of 3 to move the x variables to the left side of the equation and then I'm going to add the 2 natural log of 2 to move it to the right so my x terms are on the left and my non-x terms are on the right. So this becomes 3x natural log of 2 minus 2x natural log of 3. My x variables are now on the left side of my equation. The right side of the equation will be the natural log of 3 plus 2 natural log of 2. So what I have done here is I, I now have my x variable on the left side of my equation. It's in two different terms over there, but it is on the left side. Now, to get x out of it, I just need to factor. So I factor my x out, leaving behind a 3 natural log of 2 minus a 2 natural log of 3. So finally x is alone, almost alone. I just have to divide all that mess off to get x. So to finally get x, which is a big answer, is the natural log of 3 
plus 2 natural log of 2 all over 3 natural log of 2 minus 2 natural log of 3. You cannot cancel anything. Leave it alone. Don't start trying to cancel stuff. You cannot. This is it. All of your answers are x equals something in this section. Whether it's a nice number or something hideous like a fraction full of logarithms, I don't know, but it will be x equals. So that's solving an exponential equation by, by applying a natural logarithm. This is a very different kind of exponential equations. Part C is all by itself. This is very distinguished as totally different solving of exponential equations. This one's really, really different. Not hard, but very, very different. This is a trinomial equal to zero, which looks a whole lot like a quadratic equation. So what we do when you see this is we say, let's change this up, and let's let a equal e to the x. Let's let a equal e to the x. We're going to do what we call some substitution here. We're going to make up a new variable, and we're going to make up a. Let's let a equal e to the x. Well, what happens is e to the 2x becomes a squared. 8 e to the x becomes 8a. And now you do have a quadratic equation. Now you do have a quadratic equation and I can factor this. So this will factor into a minus 2 times a minus, well, a minus 2 times a minus 6. I was thinking ahead. a minus 2 times a minus 6 equaling 0. So all of a sudden it becomes pretty simple, kind of reverting back to just plain algebra without even e in it. So then you set each one of these factors equal to 0, as we have done many times and come up with these solutions for A. Now you can't square this answer off because they didn't even give me A in the question. So my answer cannot be an A value. But I've gotten down to a point where I should be able to finish this off because now I just remember, oh yeah, I said A equal to E to the X. So this is really E to the X equaling 2 and E to the X equaling 6. So I'm still looking for the value of the x variable, and now I have my x variable back. So now how do I get x? The way I get x is I take the natural log of each side. I'm going to take the natural log of e to the x, the natural log of 2. Well, the natural log of e to the x is just x. So my x value equals the natural log of 2. I'm going to do the same thing when e to the x equals 6. I'm going to come in here and take the natural log of each side. And when I do, I'm going to get x equaling the natural log of 6. I have two solutions to this exponential equation. And there they are. So this is a definite pattern that you'll use consistently on this kind of an exponential equation. So we'll do one more before we close this recording. We're going to do the same exact thing to number 2. We're going to let a equal e to the x. So this quadratic equation will no longer have the exponential function in it. It will just become a squared minus 6a plus 5 equaling 0. Then using the same process as in number 1, this will factor into an a minus 1 times an a minus 5 equaling 0. When I set each binomial equal to 0, y'all sure are a quiet crowd. <laughs> when I set each binomial equal to 0, I come with, with a value of 1 and a value of 5. And you might think you're done, but you're not. You're close, but you're not. Because the original question did not have A in it. I introduced A into the question to make it easier to solve. So I can't have an answer that says A. 
but I can have an answer with the x in it because a equals e to the x, this is e to the x equaling 1, and e to the x equaling 5. So I'm back to my x variable. Let go of the a. I jumped into the a and now I'm coming out of the a variable. Then just as an example 1, I'm going to apply the natural logarithm to each side of this equation because the natural log of e to the x is just x. When e to the x equals 5 and I apply the natural logarithm to it on both sides, I get a similar result, x equals the natural log of 5. Which are my solutions? Well, I'm going to square off the natural log of 5 but the natural log of 1 I'm not going to square off because the natural log of 1 equals 0. Right? Okay, so that's all the exponentials we're going to solve because part 2 here is logarithmic equations. So we're going to call this good at this point until we come back.